Hello, 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 and welcome back for another episode of Up Close and Personal with Angela. On behalf of Aspiring Authors Magazine, I want to thank you guys for sharing with us over these last couple of weeks. Um, we've had the opportunity to share with you guys some amazing individuals that's doing some amazing things across this world. Um, I'm super excited to have Mr. Um, Wendell Fields with us today. But for those that do not know who I am, I am Angela Thomas Smith. I'm the founder of AALAC, which is the African American Author Literacy Awareness Campaign. I am also the CEO of Aspiring Authors Magazine. And my whole desire is to bridge the gap between brown authors all over this world and to touch on topics that others don't want to talk about that affects our brown community. So we've been sharing, 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 and introducing you guys to some amazing people that are doing some amazing things in their community around the world. If you would, please take this opportunity and share this in your circle of influence. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. I can guarantee you, you will walk away with a nugget that can impact your life because we are here to educate, empower, and encourage you into your purpose. So take this opportunity to share this with someone else. While I bring up my special guest, Mr. Wendell Fields. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, y'all. What's going on? Woo. How y'all How doing? are you? How, the, the question is, how you doing, young lady? I'm doing good. I won't complain. I, I will not complain. It's not It's not worth it. it, 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 wow. it complaining um, takes too much energy. So you know what? I am well. Mm, mm, mm. I, I bow down, Lady Angela. I bow down. I just bow down to you and know that whew, I'm glad that God got you in the palm of his hand. He got all of us, really. He really do got us in the palm of his hand. And you the apple of his eye and keep on just shining, girl. Thank you for what you're doing, how you doing, and just um, keep shining. Y your light is shining, girl, and it's bright so that people can wow. see and that people can dodge you know those things that trip them up <laughs> and when the light is on you you can see man but when you can't see you be hidden and smacking into things left and right but woo, wow. when that light is on oh ah, yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am Yes. So I, well, I, I want to welcome you um, because I know you are an amazing man. I, I, I see all the amazing work that you're doing. Um, you you definitely touch on a topic that is near and dear to my heart, mental health, um, suicide and depression is something that um, has affected my family. Um, mm. and, and yes, um, in 2017, I lost three family members to suicide. One was, fifth, was 14, hadn't even turned 15 the day before Mother's Day. And that same month, um, I, it was a week later, I think I lost a cousin. And then the following week after that, on Memorial Day, I lost a cousin. So, yes, um, 2017 was not a good year. <laughs> wow. But God is good. God is yet good. And I mm. thank you for the work that you do. Um, I want to take this opportunity to give you um, a chance to tell all these people that are listening just a little bit about who you are, what you're doing, um, and what you're doing to impact your community because you do amazing work. So I want you to share that. I'm going to move out the way um, so that they can see you and they can hear you loud and clear. Oh, man. Well, thank you for this opportunity. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Wynn Dale Fields. Oh, yeah. I like saying that name. I think I'll say it one more again. One more again. Wynn Dale Fields. Woo! God, God that thing gets me. Woo! That thing gets me every time I say it. Y'all, at one point, I hated that name. I hated that name to be even spoken because in it, all I heard was, you in trouble. <laughs> what you done did now. And so forth and so on. And just get ready for your, book, your, your butt to be whooped and, and all of that. And so when I heard my name called, I didn't like hearing it. But one day this amazing woman at a former place that I used to work. Her name is Philandra Johnson. And Philandra said my name in a way that I never heard it said before. And she only saw, saw me from a side point of view. And she said, when Dale feels. And I was like, whoa, I have never heard my name say in such a positive way like that. And then she said, where you been, boy? 
man, that that did me so good, you all. Y'all just don't know. And in that, that's how I like to introduce my name to other people. It's not Wendell. It's not Wendell. It's Wendell Fields. Woo! Gets me every time, you all. But enough of that. Let me tell you who this joker is that's before you. I'm a person that's in long-term recovery with all things depression. And in, in 2008, ladies and gentlemen, I tried to take my life. I sure did. I was trying to make sure I killed myself by coming in contact with an incoming train. Okay. But in that, you all, I got 28 years of mental health and substance use um, experience, you all. I work at Viewpoint Health and I work with a, a mobile crisis team for over 14 years now. Like I said, I attempted suicide and in that I had to grow up. I had to mature and I get more in, in, in that story later on. I am a recipient of the June 2019 Viewpoint Health Extra Mile Award. I'm a co-author of the best-selling book that's on Amazon. There is no health without mental health anthology, men and mental health. I'm a cast member of the multi-award um, winning documentary film, Suicide, The Ripple Effect. And I am a certified instructor in PQR. Calm or counseling on lethal means and youth mental health first aid. So with all of that, I'm Wendell Fields. And hey, like I told you, in 2008, I tried to take my life, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, what would you do? What would you do, ladies and gentlemen, if your grandmother was asked this question? Who do you want to live? Do you want your daughter to live or do you want the baby that's inside of her to live? And my grandmother was a woman of faith. And in that, she said, both shall live. How about that? And in that, I, 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 saw, I, I know about turmoil. I know about conflict. I know about things that um, are pretty hard to cope with during this time, especially in a pandemic. Because see, my mom had eclampsia. No, she didn't have clamps, y'all. No, no, she had eclampsia, which means that she was having seizures. She was going blind. She, um, high she had high blood pressure. She had all these medical issues going on and they called it back then fetal poisoning, okay? And I was causing my mom sickness and I was calling her causing illness for her. And in that, my mom must have been out of it, you all, for the doctor to go to my grandmother and ask that question of, hey, who do you want to live? And so in that, she said, both of them shall live. And in that, you all, I had a terrible time being birthed. I couldn't make it through the birth canal. And somehow the doctor had to push me back in my mom's womb and do a C-section. And that's how I came out. But guess what? I came out two pounds, 10 ounces big, and I was underdeveloped. And so in that, ladies and gentlemen, I was placed in an incubator. And for a while, I was there until I gained weight and that I, I, I was able to get well because I had pneumonia of all things as a small child, okay? So in that, as an infant, hey, they nursed me up. They got me ready. Ooh -wee! That thing was hopping and popping. And guess what? This brother man was able to be released from the hospital. Oh yeah, gain weight. Oh yeah, I was healthy. I had a murmur on my heart, but hey, 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 hey. it was all good. Can you see the brother man? All, all small. I mean, hey, I could fit in the baseball cap my whole body when I was born. But yet, hey, I'm out the hospital. Can you see me now? Can you feel me now? Ooh. Everybody's staying alive, staying alive. Uh. Oh, 
yeah. Can you see that, y'all? Oh, man, it's a good time. The brother man is learning about the sights, the sounds, the feels, even the smells. And oh, yeah, that taste of ice cream and birthday cake. Oh, yeah, that man was making it happen. Oh, yeah. And so I was in the arms of a protective family. And they let me into the world. And that's when things change, ladies and gentlemen. Here it is. I ended up at the age of four, I can remember, being sexually molested by both men and women. But they were teenagers at that time. And so they're experimenting with their body and they decided to experiment on me. And so for a long time, I had to deal with that. Not, not only that, ladies and gentlemen, but as you know, I was small and framed and everything. So I got bullied a lot. And in being bullied, um, I mean, I would almost get into fights uh, almost every day with being bullied. OK, but yet here it is in my mind. It's, 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 it's messing with me, ladies and gentlemen. And so with that, you know, hey, I went off to school and. And there I, I was still picking on and they looked at me as though he's not going to perform well in school and he's not this, he's not that. And all these things are being said about me. OK, so I'm being picked on because of my size and because people bigger than me can pick on me, you know, but yet all this is making some mental health things go awry. OK, so in that, ladies and gentlemen, here it is. My mom decided to put me in, of all things, an oratorical contest. And in that, ladies and gentlemen, this brother man, small in stature. Oh, yeah, he won. He won the school oratorical contest and decided to go to the district there. Now, I didn't win that, but, oh, man, people were like, hey, we know you, you win their fields, you win them, and, and you go to this particular school, and you won the oratorical. This brother, man, felt good. When I say good, somebody say, mm-hmm, good. I felt good because people didn't see me as that short, underweight type of guy. I, I did something. And so in that you all, hey, this brother man ended up going to middle school, okay? At that time, it was high school. They didn't have no middle school. And, you know, I, I, I was feeling myself. I'm feeling myself. What? What? Feeling myself. Feeling myself. Yeah. And, boy, I got over there. I was in a Catholic high school. I mean, a Catholic elementary school, so we had a uniform to wear. Well, I got over there and decided to wear my own combo. Yeah. And I got picked on, y'all. Then I just leave that in elementary school. Now I'm going to high school and people, come on, man. Ugh. So then my grades, now they was already, I, I was the C, D, E, F, G student, okay? But yet here it is, ladies and gentlemen, when I went to high school and when that expectation of low performance is on you, I, I, I perform poorly. Okay. And so in that, ladies and gentlemen, it ends up that I plagiarized out of a book. And I believe this is when I was in the 10th grade and a teacher, black teacher, freckles, wore glasses, somewhat heavy set. She looked at an assignment I turned in and she said, Hey, say that word. And I couldn't say the word, ladies and gentlemen. She said, what that word mean? And I couldn't tell her what the word means. She said, you plagiarized. And I'm going to give you an F on this, but I'm going to give you another chance. I'm going to give you the opportunity to make up. And she was like, what's wrong with you? You're better than this. You're a smart young man. And you know what? She motivated me to change the thinking about myself. That I was smart. Yeah, I was small frame, but I could be smart. And it encouraged me to go to college. And I graduated from high school, went to Tuskegee University. How about that? Them golden tigers. Yes, 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 yes. And ended up getting distracted, you all, 
getting distracted by the party, by the girls. And I went girl chasing, party hopping and all that. And you all, I got not, I got on academic probation, not once, not even twice, but three times there now, three, three. And ended up trying to pledge also. And in that, ladies and gentlemen, I was just messed up. I was making those grades again that were C's and D's. And I just got to, in high school. I was making A's, B's, you know, C. One or two C's. You know, come on, man. And then I went off to college and got distracted. And in, in that, trying to pledge a fraternity, ended up that I decided to get out of the fraternity because my grades were suffering so bad. And in that, they said, man, you lucky if you don't get shot while you're here. <laughs> Deuces. <laughs> this brother man got up out of there and ended up going all the way to the middle of the nation to Oral Roberts University. How about that? Now, that's a change from Tuskegee to Oral Roberts University. Oh, man, what you say, what you say. <laughs> there was no party in it. Now, you had to find it, but it was no partying for me there. And guess what? Boom. I hit them books like never before. I'm making A's and B's then. But then guess what? <laughs> Something happened. I ended up getting a hernia. And it was so painful, so bad, you all. I remember walking and my, you remember the lady with the issue of blood and, and she was walking over and she couldn't snap. That was me. That was me. But I was a male version, okay? And got up there, you all, and it ends up that this man got the operation but couldn't recover well. And in that, I got on academic probation once, got on academic uh, probation twice, and I was asked to go home. With that, I went home, but my head was down, you all. I was shamed because my parents, they loved me and they wanted me to succeed and they had spent so much money on trying to make sure that I did succeed. And here it is, I'm at home. And I just remember my sister saying to me, man, um, and this was in uh, in February of um, 1996 or five, no, 93, it was 93. And it ended up you all that she said, hey, fill out this job application. I halfway filled it out, turned it in. How about, the company person who was over it called me and redid the application listening to me and she wrote down my 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 answers and i got the job okay so here it is working with the state of georgia now for over 28 years still to this time to this day you all i I had a job. I, my sister gave me her car. You know, I'm riding on the high road, you know, and it ends up that, hey, had come that down with roller coaster again. And um, I ended up, now I, I, I got married. I got married young, 23, 22. You know, you don't know nothing about life at that time, but hey, I wanted to get married. And I did get married and it ended up, you all, that the good things that was happening in my life started going downhill. Yes, I became a minister. And and man, I was a, a, a great youth minister. I really could flow with the children. I was married. I had a good paying job. I had transportation and, and all of that good stuff. But yet I still didn't have that degree. And all these things start to pile up, the marriage, not having a degree, um, the job performance, all these things was happening. And it ended up that I got a divorce. The ministry that I was in, I became executive um, pastor. And in that you all, a scandal broke out in the church, not with me, but I can say that a scandal affected the church. And we dispersed and it hurt me so bad. I, y'all, it was just terrible. And not only that, with the divorce, with the church, the job that I got, it wasn't paying that much. And I did get my degree, but still with the degree, you know, it only, it's only so far you can go. 
And with that divorce came, of all things, of course, we had a child. And an arrears came up. What's an arrears? It means I owe back child support, ladies and gentlemen. Now, in my mind, okay, in my mind, I was paying child support. But the person's mother was like, no, you weren't. And that's why I did what I did. And I was just like, "Mm -mm." I had to go and prove myself and show that I was paying child support. And in that, ladies and gentlemen, when I felt like all I was was an ATM machine, just giving out money, 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 and nothing more, because at that time I wasn't able to see my son. I just had it up to here. And it's above my head now. And in that, I wanted to end my life and I planned on how to do it. So in 2008, that's what happened. I planned to take my life. And in that, you all, I remember driving because I'm thinking that, hey, at least I'm good for something. If it's money, they can get the insurance money. And in that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm driving and this is what's happening. I hear a voice outside of my head say, your son. At that time, my son was three years old. And I was like, my son, that's who I'm doing this for. He can get the insurance money. They could be happy. And I remember hearing that voice again saying, your son. And. I'm driving. The train is on my right hand side, ladies and gentlemen. And I remember I'm going to go on. I remember letting go of the steering wheel. I remember that. And the car turned left. And the train was on my right. I turned. I didn't turn, but God turned that thing to the left. And I remember going up an embankment, going down, hitting the pole, and I sat there and I cried like nobody's business, like a newborn baby. I cried because I was so tired. I was hurt and I wanted that pain to end. So I started on the journey. That journey took me 10 years to get that battle going because in 2008, it was a battle for my life. And in that I had ups and downs. Yeah, I went to therapy. I didn't like therapy. I hated therapy and I stopped going to therapy. Yeah, I had medications and those medications made me feel loopy as I don't know what. It felt like everybody was doing their normal walking, cars driving, and I felt like I was going in slow motion. And I didn't want to take meds and I stopped taking meds. And for 10 years, I ended up being miserable because I stopped all the intervention stuff, the treatment, the medications, therapy. I was just walking through life for 10 years miserable. And it ends up, ladies and gentlemen, that I remember hearing this gentleman. His name is Kevin Hines. He's famous in the way that he shares his story about jumping off the Golden State Bridge and surviving. But the thing that got me with hearing his story was this. Once he had jumped off that bridge, immediately he felt regretful. And he said to himself while in midair, what am I doing? I don't want to die. I want to live. I want to live. I want to live. And hearing his story, it touched my heart. I'm I'm bawling. I'm bawling after hearing his story. I went up to the guy and say, "Man, you 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 saved my life today." He's like, "What you mean?" I'm I'm like, "If you only knew." Cause see, at that time, I was thinking about killing myself again, cause life was low. But hearing his story and he changed my perspective about life. Because what happened if I did do what I was thinking of doing and I survived it. I would have possibly brought more hurt and pain to myself 
if I would have had carried out the act. And so in doing so, he changed my perspective on maybe I need to get my little self together and maybe try working on myself. Another story, as I was working um, in the field of mental health, my supervisor, her name was Teresa Johnson, still alive. She she does practice. She she got up there and she recognized that my work performance was low and that I was depressed and things of that nature. And so she just met with me. She said, I wonder what's going on. Your job performance is low. You look sad depressed and you're not happy. And this was my time to say, hey, do I fess up and say, I've been having issues, I'm having problems. And I think about killing myself. Or do I play it off and, and all that? You all, you have to be vulnerable sometimes. And this was one of those times that I chose to be. And you have to have courage to say what I'm about to say. I told her, I said, I ain't doing so hot. And I let her know what was going on. And she said, well, I think you might be depressed. And I say, huh? She was like, I think you might need depressed. And you know, you can go get help. And she talked about medications. Now, mind you, I had taken medications before and I didn't want to go back. And she shared with me how she was depressed about her mom passing and that till this day, she still took medications. She talked to me about medications that she took. And she said, you know, there are medications that don't have side effects like you were describing. I think you should go in and try to get some help with that. She said, this is what made the difference. She said, do you want me to go with you? I'm like, huh? Who would do this? This person, this is not a work comp, comp type of thing, okay? Work compensation. She volunteered to take me. Better yet, she even said, I'll ride with you to go there. And I said, no, I, I'll go. Those are the two people that changed my life about going to get help. Some of you all are, are, are thinking about getting help. It's okay to go get help. Stop being afraid. I know, I, I know, you know, I, yeah, I got this gray and, 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 you know, I'm a grown man and, and everything, but in doing so, it was the best thing I ever did because I did find a medication that worked for me. That didn't make me feel loopy. That didn't that that helps me to go to sleep at night. But yet here it is, you all in doing those things. My life started improving. In fact, it started to improve even better when I start paying attention to my health. So men or ladies, please get your annual checkups. Why? Because that's going to give you a good indication of where your body is and what you can make a decision about doing. Okay. So I find out I got sleep apnea. Okay. So that's when you stop breathing when you're sleeping. I found out that I have type two diabetes. Okay. That affects mood. It affects everything. Okay. And I found out overweight, of course, and all those things. But what I didn't know was that with my health stuff, it was affecting my mental health. Because if you don't sleep properly, it'll get you, it'll get you irritable quicker. You're, you're irritated by sounds, sights, all those things. Not only that, but also you start your mind, you can't focus or concentrate. So getting sleep is so important, ladies and gentlemen. Two, I found out that diet and that uh, diabetes type two that I have. If my diabetes is off, then I'm off and I could get weak. I can get uh, irritable. I mean, the same things with the sleep. 
And so I find out, hey, I got to eat right. Hey, I got to have some outlets in my life. Instead of just take, go to work, come home, eat. Okay, I got to be a dad because now I'm getting visits and everything. I got to be a dad. Okay, I got to cook. Okay, we, I'm just, I found out that, hey, you need to take some time out for yourself. Do that self-care. It's so, hey, now I'm, I'm a proponent of not drinking alcoholic beverages. That is me because I got a disposition in my family with that one. So you got to know your family history, too. And in that, you can make better and sound judgment about how you want to take care of you. So I don't drink. I don't, never have done drugs. OK. And in that, my life has gotten better because I made just some simple changes in that. OK. Not only that, I learned how to use the community resources that's out there. Now, you know where the grocery store is in your local neighborhood. Now, if you go to Kroger's, if you go to uh, 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 Big Bear, if you go to Winn-Dixie, if you go uh, uh, to Publix, now you know where the peanut butter is on that aisle where it is. Why? Because you frequently go there and you know how to use the grocery store to your needs, right? So wherever that peanut butter jar is, it, whether it's, 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 it's Pam or Jiffy or, or Snippy or whatever it is you, that you got for peanut butter, you know where it is in the store because you go there frequently. But how many of us go to the places that can help us with our mental health or our physical health or our spiritual health or emotional health? How often do we go there? We don't because we don't value. We don't value those things. Our culture has taught us what to value, why to value it, and how to do it. But we have to be our best proponent of our health by finding out the resources. And you know what that's going to take? Courage and vulnerability. And that's what I do. It was hard for me to talk out, you know, talk to you all about what was going on, especially when I've been sexually abused by not just men, but also women. And here it is, you all, those shaming things, those things that make you say, ooh, uh, I, don't, mm. I had to get over that because it was killing me and I don't want it to kill you. So that's when the book came out, the mental health book, men and mental health. There's no health without mental health, men and mental health anthology. Let's talk about it. 14 men got together. I'm one of them. And we said, man, we got to change our culture. We got to change the value. We got to change what is useful. And in that book, we talk about our stories, our journeys that has gotten us to where we are, where we were, and how we've overcome. Now, you all, I give back. When I say I give back, y'all, I'm, I'm grinding hard. That's the reason why I got involved with QPR, question, persuade, and refer. It's a suicide prevention type of organization that trains you on recognizing the signs, the symptoms of if someone is thinking, considering, or is about to take their own life. That's the reason why I got involved with CALM, counseling on access to lethal means, meaning guns of all things. Firearms are 50, 57% the thing that is used to take their life. And guess who's doing it more? Men. Now the ladies, y'all catching up now. Y'all are catching up. But men are more successful. Women attempt more with it and it doesn't matter what race you are 
men are constantly taking their life more and more. And don't let them take alcohol and drugs and they upset and they got a firearm. Continue so, that. You've been touching on some stuff back here. So I had hey. to come up because uh -oh, you, you uh -oh, I, I uh -oh. thank you for being transparent today as well. Um, because um, first I just have to I, I just want to honor you for being transparent because it definitely took a lot um to even come out with your story to be in that book. And for you to come on today and to be sharing, that's something that in our community, men don't like to talk about this. And and, and we have hushed hush. And what happened in, in my house, stay in my house for so long till we just brush everything under the rug and we don't want to talk about it. So I applaud you. I, 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 I thank you. And I thank those 13 other men that is a part of that anthology with you that did not think it robbery to share because it is impacting lives and it's going to impact more lives. I thank you. I thank you because you could have been hush hush. You could have kept that inside. You could have continued to hurt in silence, but you chose healing. Yes. Oh, you better you say that. You chose to heal. You better say that. And I that. thank you. I you. thank you. You didn't allow your. You didn't allow hindrance to stop you. All these little things that was coming at you, you didn't allow it to stop you. You didn't allow your ego get, to get in the way. You didn't allow your attitude, and you moved in love. That's why I said when people when, when God dropped that word healed in my spirit, I knew he dropped it in my spirit for a reason because I was going to have to be sharing it I, because you definitely are walking in healing. Damn. I was just sitting back over here. I was like, I can't just sit here and just let him just keep talking about himself. I got to let him know how powerful he is and what he's doing because what you're doing and what you're saying is amazing. And there's more men out there that need to hear this because some of them have stories that they're sitting on. They have testimonies that they need to share. But because of ego Ooh. and because of attitudes, Ooh. they won't allow themselves to heal. Mm. Well, let, 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 let me just share this piece. Now, as an African-American, we understand more about racism, prejudice, all those things. And it affects people. And guess what? It was designed to do that. The system of racism is designed to do that to not just men, but women too of color. So my Latinos, that it's all, but here's the thing. When I talk about community uh, supports and resources, I talk about faith too, because I go to church faithfully. And I listened to my man of God, uh, Apostle Travis Jennings, and he, he has a way of touching my heart and yours, if you choose to allow him to. And he's changed my perspective about who I am and what I am and what I can do. And the sky is the limit. And, you know, as a man, we always got to have that tough person culture. We, we, we have to let people know that, hey, no problems here, but yet inside we got chronic pain that's going on. Inside, we got sleep problems. Inside, we, we isolate ourselves and separate ourselves from friends and family because we feel that there's no connection there. We're afraid of being laid off of our jobs. So we use the alcohol, we use the drugs to try to medicate that hurt and that pain, we got that high blood pressure. We use those lethal means to, to get through. We, we are scared of the mental health because of the stigma that's involved. People say you crazy. We even self stigmatize ourselves and it holds us back for so much potential that we can give others like Kevin Hines did by sharing the story, like Teresa Johnson did sharing her story. And here it is, we're so afraid of that 
job and losing a job. But you got EPAs <laughs> that uh, you can go there for free on your job. Men, please go get the help that's needed, that's out there for you so you can be the person who you believe yourself to be without the use of drugs and alcohol, even sex, even other things, because you're so much powerful than those individual things. Women, you're powerful. Stop selling yourself short. Men, you're powerful. Stop selling yourself short. Stop looking at the short picture. Stop looking at the rider picture. Turn the, the pyramid, turn that thing upside down to where the point is down and it goes up and spreads out. That's you. You're much more than what you think you are. You're not just a, a, a man that plays video games. You're much more than that. You got a mind like nobody's business. You're sharp. You're intelligent. You have a way of bringing out the best in others. You are a leader. Women, you're leaders. Stop looking at yourself because the enemy, and I'm talking about the spiritual one now, they want you to look different, act different. And 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 in that way, if you do that, you won't be all who you are to be. So, you know, I just want to encourage you. Don't you cave in. Don't you give up. Don't you quit because you're a diamond. <clears throat> Amen. You're a diamond. And, uh, I want you to share with people how they can reach out to you and how they can connect with you. And if you have anything, any projects going on, please share um, with us. Well, you can reach this good old person right here, ballheaded joker that I am at my email, which is Wendell underscore feels at yahoo.com. Or you can go to my website at www.wendellfields.com. And you can message me on Facebook and Instagram at on Instagram, though, I'm at when blue B L E W. OK, and upcoming projects. Let me tell you. Well, this coming Sunday, I will be having an appearance of in all places, the UK, the United Kingdom on Sunday at 12 noon now you might have to go to my site my site or you can go to facebook and find out okay now you can go there to, to that see. is the the black with um the black book webinar yes it is oh yes I will, I will be sharing it um i will be sharing it across my social media platform as well so yeah um Congratulations. Um, amazing platform. You're going to enjoy it. You're going to enjoy it. I, I had an amazing time the three times that I've been on it. So you're going to enjoy it. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, I thank you for your insight and your experience with that. And you all, if you want to go get the book now, you can go to Amazon.com, but also you can go to my, my I tell you, this lady, this lady is awesome. Vanessa Abram. Let me tell you, you go to her website and you can get the book from there. Oh, yes. SDP3. Oh, yeah. Dot com. What you say, what you say. That woman right there, that woman on fire. Now, she, she, she is amazing. She gets up there. She and um, another woman by the name of Angel, um, they're in the book. And they share their stories. Vanessa Abram talks about her brother who decided to take his life. Um, and he was in the military. Okay. So I'm telling you, it's some awesome people. Lady Angela right here, she doing what she do. She's connecting people. She's being a bridge for other people to connect with, to elevate them 
educate them and inspire them to be much more than they could ever be. So y'all, 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 y'all doing a good thing listening to her now. She gonna educate you now. She gonna educate you. <laughs> and in that, Thank you. she's helping so many. And I just like I, I told you at the beginning, didn't I? I told you I said what. I bow down, Lady Angela. I, I, I bow down. I bow down. Well, thank you. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm honored and humbled. Um, I just do what I'm called to do. I just want to provide a platform for other people to share because we have some amazing people in this world that are doing some amazing things, and people just need to know who they are. So I utilize my platform to do just that. So I thank you for stopping by today. Oh, thank you. And you all, you never know. Conditions. Conditions. What are the conditions? When I was being born, it was turmoil going on. But look what came out of that turmoil. <laughs> A little boy making it happen. <laughs> Trying to make it happen now. And look at Lady Angela. Who would know for a time such as this, you would be so powerful and useful. Oh. So you all, stop being afraid. Go get the help. Black men, white men, men, ladies, even the ones that are being abused in domestic violence, go get the help that you need so you can live. Amen. Well, I would definitely want to thank you for stopping by and sharing with us today. Um, you have definitely been an inspiration um, for us on today. Um, anything that you would like to encourage the people before we leave? We hey, got about all. two minutes. Hey, you all. Just wanted to say thank you to Kevin Hines. Thank you to Teresa Johnson, Philandra Johnson. Thank you, Lady um, Thomas or Lady Angela, I like to call you. And just um, you all, please go get the help. Just go get the help. It's out there. There's so many things that's out there. Hey, find the hot lines. Find the warm lines. They're there for you 24-7. If you want to talk about suicide, if you just want to talk about other things, there are 24-7 warm lines and hot lines that you can call and get help. Sometimes we need to vent. So well, for those that don't know, um, 988 is live now. So if you are having um suicide, um, those suicide um thoughts, thoughts um, yeah. please call 988 just like you would dial 911, just press 988, and yeah. someone will be there to, to help you. Um, you don't have to hurt in silence. Um, so again, um, Wendell Fields, thank you for stopping by and sharing with me on today. I hope you have a blessed evening. You too now, and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. And I want to thank everyone that has tuned in today for another episode of Up Close and Personal with Angela. If you would, please share this across your circle of influence. I tell you, Mr. Wendell Fields has dropped some important information and some vital information um, with us on today. So take this opportunity to share this in your class, in your circle of influence. I love you guys. Be blessed. And there's absolutely nothing you can do about it.